Hello everyone, and welcome to our channel. Today, we're diving into something really fascinating, understanding how buildings stay up. Specifically, we're going to look at a drawing of a building, our starting point for a cool journey into the world of engineering. Our main characters today are two beams, beam B1 and beam B2. We'll explore how much weight they can hold up, and for a little extra twist, We'll also figure out how much force it takes to push beam B1 to its limit without bending too much. Think of it like a puzzle where numbers and calculations are our clues. So let's start piecing this puzzle together and make sense of all the numbers involved. It's going to be fun and informative, so stay tuned. Now let's talk about beam B1. Imagine it's holding up a part of the building floor. Some of this floor is spread out evenly, and that's what we call the uniformly distributed load. The other part of the floor is not spread out so evenly. It's heavier on one side, kind of like a triangle shape of weight. This is our triangular load. To make sure our beam can handle this without any trouble, we do some math magic. We take 1.4 times the dead load, which is just the weight of the building materials, and then add 1.6 times the live load, which includes the weight of everything else that might move around, like people and furniture. So for the triangular-shaped part, we have a base of 4 meters and a height of 4 meters. Multiply those together, and we have 16 square meters. Then we take our special mix of loads we talked about and multiply it with this area. What we get is 316.8 kilonewton. That's a fancy way of saying, this is how much weight the beam can support on the triangular side. Now, for the rectangular load, we have an area that's 1.5 meters by 8 meters, which equals 12 square meters. We do the same kind of math as we did for the triangular part and find out it can take 160.8 kilonewton of weight. Add those two numbers together, the triangle and the rectangle, and the grand total tells us beam B1 can hold up 477.6 kN. Pretty strong, right? Okay, let's shift our focus to beam B2. This one's a bit different from beam B1 because it's holding up a part of the floor that's shaped like a trapezoid. Imagine a four-sided shape that looks like a stretched-out triangle that's our trapezoid. To figure out how much weight beam B2 can handle, we first need to know how big this trapezoid is. So we take the lengths of its top and bottom sides. That's 2 meters and 10 meters. Add them together and then halve it. Multiply this with the height of the trapezoid, which is 4 meters. Do all that and we find out our trapezoid is 24 square meters in size. Now, for the weight part, just like with beam B1, we multiply this area by 1.4 times the dead load plus 1.6 times the live load. After doing the math, we find out that beam B2 can support a weight of 475.2 kN. That's quite a bit. But there's a bit more to it. Beam B2 also gets some weight from beam B1, which we call the end reaction. This adds another 238.8 kN to beam B2. So it's not just carrying its own load, but helping out beam B1 as well. Talk about teamwork in the world of beams. Now, let's bring it all home with the final piece of our beam B1 puzzle, figuring out its shear force and bending moment. These might sound like big technical terms, but don't worry, I'll walk you through them. First up, shear force. Think of this as the amount of sideways push the beam can handle before it starts sliding apart. Since our beam is the same on both ends, what we call symmetrical, finding the maximum shear force is pretty straightforward. We just take the total design load, which we already figured out as 477.6 kN, and then split it in half. That gives us 238.8 kN as the maximum shear force. 
This is like saying, this is the most push the beam can take at any one point before it says enough. Now, for the bending moment. This is about how much the beam can bend without breaking. The spot where it bends the most. Right in the middle, the mid-span. To work this out, we do a bit of math using our shear force number and the distances and loads involved. After crunching those numbers, we find that the maximum bending moment is 583.2 kilonewton meters. That's the beam's limit for a good safe bend without going too far. And that's a wrap on our engineering deep dive today. We've journeyed through the world of beams, unraveling the mysteries of how they support our buildings. From Beam B1's ability to hold up a mix of triangular and rectangular loads, to Beam B2's trapsoidal challenges, and even discovering just how much Beam B1 can bend and twist without giving in, it's been quite the adventure. I hope this session has shed some light on the amazing world of structural engineering and maybe even sparked a bit more curiosity in you. Remember, engineering isn't just about numbers and calculations. It's about solving real-world puzzles, creating safe spaces, and most importantly, it's about never stopping learning. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit that like button. Share your thoughts or questions in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. And of course, subscribe to stay updated on all our future explorations. Until next time, keep asking questions, keep exploring, and keep building your understanding. Who knows what puzzle we'll solve next. Take care, and see you in the next video.